guys, this is Hazel Olive, and there is something you need to know about me. Um, granted, you probably had a small inkling that I was of the otaku breed, considering some of the stuff I've posted on my channel. But I am also a I am also a bit of a visual novel trash. Because I can't help it. I mean, I see some really cute, cool visual novels, and it's just one of the things I also like to play. So, I have a cool one here. It's called Monstrato Fracture. And granted, I have played this one before, but it's just, it was such a good one that I wanted to play it again to show it off on the channel. And I am going to have long hair. Although, I like how you can kind of customize your hair color. In this one, only it would be nice if you could customize the background color too because I'm blonde. Yes, I am Theo. Although this game, it, it lets you choose your adjective, which is also kind of cool. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be green haired. And... I guess that looks good. Ugh, I'm actually much paler than that, but it looks natural, so... I wake up in an unfamiliar bedroom. Where am I? Oh right, my dorm room. I'm a college student now. I yawn and stretch, sitting up, and my new roommate, Francis, peeks in. Hey, you're awake. Sleep well? Considering we're sleeping in an old haunted castle instead of the actual dorm halls? Yeah, decently well. It's just my luck that the college I'm attending has a major fire over the summer. A bunch of the main buildings burned down, including our dorm hall. So most of the classes and dorms were moved to an abandoned castle on the property. A castle with a reputation for being haunted, of course. I mean, wouldn't you want to go to that one? That would be where the, all the interesting crap happens. I mean, you could go to a normal one and be a normal college, normal stuff, but it's only the haunted ones that have interesting stuff. If you go one of two ways, I see extreme sci-fi or horror movie style. Have your pick. Did you say you have a class at 10? Yeah, why? Better get going, it's already 9.40. I yelp and jump out of bed, grabbing my clothes to get changed. I shove my books in my bag and dash out the door, hoping I don't get lost on the way to class. Of course, I get lost immediately. Kinda sounds like something I would do. I find myself deep in the bowels of the castle, wandering desperately and trying to find a familiar landmark. The further I go, the more unfamiliar the place becomes. I'm almost certain... I'm almost certainly going to be late for class at this break. I check my phone for the time and breathe out a curse. Another corridor, four more doors, and, a normal, and another four more doors. And then turning down a labyrinth to see even more doors. What is this place? No. But, <laughs> it probably would be like myself to get lost in a place like that. Another quarter. Around and around I go. They say when you get lost, you're supposed to just stay in one place and wait for someone to find you. But it's not like anyone's going to come looking for me. Another corner. Another door. I round another corner and finally spot a tapestry that looks somewhat familiar. I might be getting close to finding the way back. I think I know where I took the wrong turn. So I can probably find the classroom if I head down that way. I take a step forward and then stop. To my left is another door. One I hadn't noticed before when I came through the hallway. A heavy, foreboding door. My curiosity gets the best of me, as it often does. I reach for the door and pull it open. It takes some effort, creaking forward like the bones of an old man. Beyond, a musty smell rolls up from shadowed depths. Sharp stone steps descending into the dark. I know what this is without needing to be told. The castle's old dungeons. A tiny sliver of my heart yearns to explore this ominous cavern, but at the same time, I probably shouldn't. I'm already just going to be in time for class as it is. Certainly, it won't be enough time to have a real look around down there, and I don't want to get in trouble on the first day. I could always come back later. 
Besides, something about this feels off. Like, if I walk down those steps, something terrible is going to happen. Like, someone's just going to randomly jump me and mug me in the stairways. <laughs> uh, it would be better to turn back and come back later. Check, check out the creepy dungeon or go to class. You know, I'm just going to do it there. <laughs> My curiosity wins out. If I only look around for a minute, I should be able to still make it into class on time. Hopefully. If I don't die. I began to descend the steps. There turns noticeably colder. I shiver, and I let out a strangled cry when I see blood oozing down the walls. Oh wait, it's just water damage. The place is old after all. I shouldn't be so jumpy. Of course, whenever someone says I shouldn't be so jumpy... They're going to be ten times more jumpy. Still, the foreboding feeling if I had before is even stronger now. I can't push aside the thought. If I keep going, I'm going to die. Even though that's silly, incredibly silly, there's no reason I would die just from going down some old steps. And excuse you, Cuckoo Clock, I'm doing a thing here. Unless my professor murders me for being late. I can't help wanting to turn back, though. Keep going, turn back. Screw it. Doing it. I've come this far. I may as well see, through, see this through to the end. I take the last few steps into the pitch black. It takes a few moments for my eyes to adjust to the darkness. I rub my nose, which is beginning to run from the chill, and peer stubbornly against the suffocating black. I'm kind of disappointed when I can finally see. It's not a spooky dungeon at all, or at least not anymore. Now it's just some old storage space for a bunch of miscellaneous old furniture. Desks, mirrors, dusty linens, half-used candles, chalkboards. What a waste of time. I laugh at myself for being so silly as to be scared of coming down here and then turn around and run as fast fast as I can up those stairs because I'm still nervous something's gonna jump me. I get to the lecture hall and the prof professor goes over the expectations and syllabus. I pay attention for a while, but you can only focus on that sort of thing for so long. So eventually I find myself gazing around the room at my other classmates. There's a lot of interesting people at the school. It's pretty well known for its arts program, so that's probably why. One girl is texting rapidly on her phone, has glimmering scale-like makeup on her face, which is a pretty first, it's a pretty neat first day look. Kind of wish I had that kind of confidence or skill. Another girl is wearing cat ears, the mechanized kind that flick and twitch. They must be a pretty advanced model. They look way more real than the ones I've seen at conventions. I actually kind of would like a pair of those. The one guy is wearing what might honestly be the bottom half of a fursuit, even in the ebbing heat of summer. Very sure or dedicated. I feel like this is the part where this girl should just realize that, oh wait, it's actually supernatural creatures. My eyes pass over another guy sitting in the row in front of me who has shiny green ribbons twisted into his hair. Hey. No wait, on closer inspection, those ribbons appear to be seaweed? I stare at him for a bit too long, trying to figure out if he really has seaweed in his hair, and he happens to glance back and catches me looking. It's a little Kilby blush. <laughs> his face blushes vibrantly purple? And wait a second, his skin is teal! Okay, how did I miss that? That's what I want to know, that's the first thing I would have noticed. Only, I'm not entirely sure what a Kelpie is. I just know he is one, and he reminds me of a Zora. What is going on here? I look away quickly and feel my face, wondering if I had some sort of delirium-inducing fever. But I seem to be fine. When I glance back, seaweed guy is looking away, clearly embarrassed. I look away too, also embarrassed that awkward moment when you accidentally make eye contact and you're like oh no they saw me looking <laughs> I'm gonna hide now I hope 
I can't help peeking again, though, because what am I supposed to think? I lean in my chair, hoping for subtlety, and then I fall on my ass and make fun of myself. <laughs> and give him a quick once-over. Seaweed hair, tail skin, and horse feet. That's not a fashion statement. I mean, who even has feet small enough to fit into a horse-sized shoe? This guy actually has horse feet, I think. I look again and try to puzzle this out. I glance around at the other students I noticed earlier. The scales, the ears, the furry legs. This can't be real. But I think I'm surrounded by mythological creatures. Well, what was your first indication? I spend the rest of my class squinting around at all the creatures currently sitting around me. Some look human, others look definitely not. It's like reincarnation high school. But, you know, our main character's not dead. <laughs> it's weird, but I feel like I'm not as alarmed as I should be. Probably because part of me is convinced that this is some weird dream I'll wake up from any minute. Maybe some stress nightmare about me about being in an unfamiliar place and worrying about making new friends. Behind me, I heard someone whisper. Is that a kill beat? Another female voice whispers in quiet tones. Hmm, I think so. Look at that ears and tail. I glance back at them just in time to catch a glimpse of the first girl shrinking down in her seat with a whimper, her large fox ears pinned down in agitation. I didn't think the school would. I mean, aren't they kind of savage? They're me. <laughs> Which, actually, I'm not saying my first name, but that actually is my last name, so I'm happy about that. The other girl's reply is quick and curt. They're selfish and untrustworthy, that's for sure. The fox girl lets out a muffled sound that may indicate she's hiding her face with her hands. First at work, now here. Why can't we just have a safe place? It's not fair. That sounds like racism. Ahead of me, seaweed boy's ears have turned as purple as his blush and I realize he's probably the person they're talking about. I glance back at them sharply and they fall silent when we make eye contact. For a moment, anyway, before I catch Fox Girl's whisper again. What is that? I don't know. Some sort of elf, maybe? No way, look at the ears. Great, they're talking about me now. I stare straight ahead at the front of the hall and focus on ignoring their gossip. Class ends, and if this is a dream, I do not wake from it. I collect my books and papers and leave the lecture hall with the rest of the monster students. A boy with elf ears hurries past me. Hey, <laughs> I actually have a pair of those now. I've always liked elf ears. A girl who might be half shark chats excitedly with her friends. So that's the female Samakichi. A skeleton walks by with a bucket and a mop. I can't help staring, but I try not to let anyone else catch me doing it. Passing the windows on the second floor, I can see down into the courtyard where more monsters are relaxing and socializing. A group, a flock, of brightly colored creatures catches my eye. The colors are from the vibrant feathers sprouting from their bodies, and all of them have wings. I stop to look at them. I can't help it. There are three of them in total, a boy with flowing black hair and black wings, a girl with short purple hair with pink and blue feathers, and the flashiest of all, a boy with a rainbow of iridescent purple, red, and yellow plumage. plumage. They're shortly thereafter joined by another girl with a sweeping train of peacock plumes, and the four of them chatter animatedly. I feel a twinge of envy, remembering the friends I left back home. I'm about to walk away when the red and purple one looks up directly at me. I'm sure he can't see me at this distance and through a window, but then he smirks, leans over to his black-haired friend, and points at me while saying something. The one with black hair looks up at me too, and cracks a smirk of his own where the red one winks at me and blows me a kiss. Flushing furiously, I turn away from the window and quickly make my way back to my room.
When I get back to the dormitories, I consider calling my parents. This has been an awfully weird morning so far, and Dad might have some answers. He's a professional witch, so he probably knows about monsters and stuff like that. So, I can call my dad, or I can not call my dad. Oh, you got some interesting background if you do, so I guess I'll do that. Ring, ring. <laughs> that was the most pathetic ring I've done, I think. But <laughs> I just read it. After a couple of rings, it goes to voicemail. He must be busy right now. I'll try again later. The rest of that day and the next pass fairly uneventfully, other than the halls being populated with monsters. An awkward conversation with Francis leads me to believe that there's a strong likelihood that other humans here can't see them at all, which does make me wonder if I'm a bit delusional. My lecture class is still the same. So packed with monsters seeking out higher education. Now that I see it, I can't believe I didn't notice before. Honestly, how did I miss the girl with red skin and ram horns? How did you think that other dude was a furry? I mean, I know their first thoughts would be that, but I would think, um, am I seeing things? <laughs> oh, look, it's our Kopi boy again. Seaweed boy is here again, of course. He sits a little in front of me, so he's in a good position for me to study. His hair is carefully tucked out of his way, and I now notice that he has nervously clicky horse ears on top of his head. He looks at me again, and this time I decide to give him a little wave. His purple blush lights up his face as he quickly looks away. Once you get over the initial shock, it's sort of cute. I mean, dude, isn't he awesome if I could blush? purple or any color that's not natural. He sneaks a few more quick peeks at me and then tentatively gives me a small wave of his own. I smile and he hides it behind his mane and seaweed tangled hair. He doesn't look at me again for the rest of the class, perhaps too impressed to do so. I hope I didn't upset him. When we leave class, two or three of the bird people are walking by the doors. The red one catches sight of me as he passes and turns his eyes on me. And I really love this guy's color scheme. I mean, the Kopi boy who I feel bad about, whose name I can't remember, he's so adorable and he's sweet too, but I really love his colors. Up close I can see that his eyes are just as colorful as the rest of him. I mean, just, what if someone had eyes like that in real life? That would be so cool. I don't quite understand his hands, but hey. Oh, you. You're that exotic one from Mother Day. Excuse me? Exotic? Um, Nani? <laughs> Have you seen yourself? Although, granted, I would be lawed one out of this monster school, but still... There, you look positively mundane. I take that as an insult. I refuse to be a normie. <laughs> His tone sounds complimentary, but I'm not sure what he's saying is a compliment. What are you, anyway? Um, a person? His, His expression is completely unamused. Unamused. I can't speak, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Remembering that I'm surrounded by monsters, I try again. Like, a human. His eyes open wide in surprise. Oh, I see, that makes sense. Makes sense? It just explains why you appear as you do. He smiles widely while his friends titter in the background. For a human, you're pretty cute. I feel a blush creep up on my cheeks. Oh, have I embarrassed you? I suppose you're not used to compliments. I, um, I guess not. It's not like I've never been complimented before or anything, but for some reason I feel a bit taken off guard. He laughs. You're delightful. If I have time later, I would be interested in having tea with you this evening. Tea? What? Yes, it's a beverage made from... Steeping dried leaves in a hot water. I'm not stupid. I know what tea is. We have something in common then. Let's see. I think I'll be available at six. 
Yeah, you know what, I'm gonna accept his invitation because uh, he's a bit of an asshole, but I kind of... Uh, in real life, I probably wouldn't quite be attracted to that type of person. I don't know, maybe, but that's kind of the type that appears slightly standoffish. Or the really quiet types, or the mysterious types that I like in the gym mobile here. Those are my favorites. Uh, sure, that sounds nice. Where do you have in mind? There's a cafe in town called Holy Grounds. You can't miss it across the street from a burned down building. Alright, cool, I'll see you there then. He smiles and walks away to rejoin his friends, who immediately fall into gossiping. Oh, but it's so nice because... Our, our Kelpie friend comes up and he was going to defend us. As they're walking away, the seaweed boy from earlier approaches me. Are you okay? Sorry, I saw you talking to Nikolai and, um, I'm fine. Were those friends of yours? Oh, God. No. No. But you do know them. Even if I didn't, I wouldn't need to. All avian types are like that. Avian types? What it says on the tin, birds, you know, avians. Like, like that breed from, what do you, what were they even called? Like the Rito from Legend of Zelda. Oh, what do you mean they're all like that? Arrogant, conceited, haunty, condescending, rude, conniving, manipulative. Take your pick. You sound like you have some real problem with avian types. Oh, um... They, um, uh, I, I didn't mean crap, I got too excited, I'm sorry. <laughs> I almost feel like that's this type of response there. It's okay, I'm not going to hold it against you. Honestly, I don't even really know what's going on here. I, um, I'm a human. I, I didn't know if you could tell, because I don't look like anyone here. Oh, oh, that does make sense. I groaned. I mean, I wanted to be special, but not in this way. <laughs> what? That guy, Nikolai, said the exact same thing. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean. It just explains why you were staring at me earlier. I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to be rude, but it's not like I've ever seen a blue person before. <laughs> He's like a real-life blue man, but... You know, different. It's okay. With hooves and a fishtail. Yeah. And seaweed in his hair. Okay, you can stop now. Aw, but it's fun trying to embarrass you. You're too cute. You're resisting mentioning the horse ears, aren't you? Actually, it was a mouthful of razor teeth. Ah. So what's your name, anyway? Oh, it's Korean. That was his Kalian! Kalen! Cool! I'm- oh wait, I think that's saying how to pronounce it. Oops. Cool, I'm Sawyer. Did I forget to- I forgot to rename my character. I was gonna name her Snow! Okay, never mind. I extend my hand to shake, and he gives me a weird look. I lower it in awkwardly. So, um, I didn't realize that monsters attended the school. Monsters? Oh, he looks so sad now. He's giving me another weird look. I suddenly feel a bit subconscious about my word choice. Er, you know, like all you magical creature guys, I I didn't mean to, mean to offend your race. Isn't a monster a bad thing? Well, I don't know. I guess maybe I didn't mean it as a bad thing. I just thought it was the term. What would the term be then? He shrugs. People, I guess? But humans are people. I guess, but that doesn't mean the rest of us aren't people. Isn't there a word for, like, just magical creatures? They or something like that, maybe? <laughs> the friendly fairy folk. I don't know. I've never heard anyone use a word like that. I think most of us just think of ourselves as people. Alternatively, I guess you could say there's the normal world and the human world. This is starting to feel like a weird dream again. It's kind of freaking me out, so I changed the subject. Anyway, thanks for making sure I was okay. You don't have to thank me. I was actually going to talk to you anyway. 
Oh, why? I just wanted to ask why you were staring at me, but you answered that question, so... Oh, well, I'm glad you talked to me anyway. Yeah, I... Um, I don't talk to a lot of people, because they're kind of dicks to me. <laughs> it's been kind of nice. I want to invite him to hang out, but I can't carry the other dudes over. But, but, you know, I really do think that's around enough for now, so. So, I'm. It's really a weird place to leave it off, but. I think I'm gonna leave this video right here for now. So, thank you guys for watching. Please. Hit the like button and leave a comment in the description. Let me know what you thought. Anyway, see you guys. See you